after looking into the various reasons for the public debt now let's look into the what are the different ways for the debt redemption debt redemption means to repay the debt what are the different methods what are the different ways by which the government repay the loans taken by the various sources first method is the repudiation of debt repudiation of debt it means in this case the government completely refuses to pay the principal as well as the interest but this is quite unpopular and unjust because if the government adopts the repudiation of debt the government loses its popularity as well as the people also lose their faith in the government and the government will not be in a position to raise loan in the future so it's quite unpopular and unjust and it is not adopted by the government in any case next thing is the refunding of debt in this case the government raises the new bonds to pay off the maturing bonds in this the government does not return the old bonds but to pay the old bonds the government raises the new bonds in the market in this case what happens the burden is only postponed to the future date it is never returned the burden of the government is never lessened in this case it is only postponed for the future date but the thing which comes the main question It remains there that the government has to return for some time we can say that the government can feel relaxed in the repayment of the loan to the public but ultimately it has to pay next thing which comes over here is the debt conversion this is another method in this case the government exchanges the new debt for the old debt it consists of the converting a high interest debt into the low interest debt in this the government just reduces the interest rate of the old debt with the new debt but this is only possible in one condition if the government enjoys good credit worthiness in the economy if the people they have faith in the government then only the government can go for this method which is known as the debt conversion next method which comes over here is the budgetary surplus it is a method which is used by the government for paying off the public debt to the people this is the method which is also useful because in this case the government is required to purchase its own bond and securities from the market but again we can say that this is again a rare phenomena we cannot we rarely find this type of method adopted by the government in the various economies next we have the terminal annuities terminal annuities is just like the paying of the installments paying of installments by the government in this case what happens the government pays debt in equal installments which includes interest as well as the principal amount but this is the method which reduces the burden of the government very slowly but it is beneficial because it maintains the faith of the people in the government at least we can say that it is better than the other methods which are adopted by the government next you have the sinking fund sinking fund it's also a new method which is reliable which is adopted by the government also in the case of sinking fund the government establishes or government makes a separate fund for the purpose of repaying its debt in simple words we can say that it's a method which is just like a piggy bank the government creates a piggy bank and every month or after a regular time duration the government keep on depositing the amount of money and once the time of repayment comes the government takes out the money from that piggy bank or from that sinking fund and repays the debt but it is very systematic method for the debt repayment but one negative point is also attached with the sinking fund method that it is a very slow method but ultimately it reduces the burden of the government next we have is the statutory reduction in the rate of interest in this case the government compulsorily reduces the rate of interest it is compulsory for all the people for all the institutions to adopt the reduced rate of interest by the government or in other words we can say that in this case the creditors are forced to accept reduced rate of interest whereas and the government adopts this method during only the financial crisis now over here we can have a some similarity with the previous method also this is the method which is quite similar to the debt conversion because in both the cases whether it is a statutory reduction in the rate of interest or the debt conversion in both the cases the government reduces the rate of interest but first one that is debt conversion that is a voluntary method whereas the statutory reduction is the compulsory and people are forced whereas in the debt conversion the people are not forced to accept the reduced rate of interest 
Next we have is the capital levy. Capital levy is the method in which the government imposes heavy tax on the property and wealth. And it is imposed on the rich individuals only on the progressive scale. Now, I would like to correlate over here with the progressive scale with the progressive taxation. As you remember, in the case of progressive taxation, more the income, more is the tax. Same over here, more the property, more the wealth of a person, more will be the tax. And this is the method which is very quick and equitable because it is in this case, the debt is repaid according to the debt uh, is repaid according to the capability, according to the ability of the taxpayers. Next is the adopted during war. This is the method which is generally adopted during the time of war. It is never adopted during the normal durations, normal conditions in the economy. Next we have is the export surplus. It's a very interesting thing and it's a very mostly used method by various economies of the world. This is the method which is known as the export surplus. In this, what happens, the whatever the loans, whatever the foreign loans are raised by the government from the various countries, various individuals, as well as by the various international organizations of the world, that foreign amount loan, that loan is only invested by the government in the industries or the manufacturing units which produce only the export items because with the help with the help of using the foreign loans in the industries which are making the export items those export items are again exported to the other countries of the world and it becomes easy for the government to repay because in this the loan is repaid by the government and side by side the economic condition of the country also develops with the help of export surplus the government is in a position to provide employment as well as the proper use of the raw materials which are available in the country. Positive effects of the public debt. What are the benefits of public debt? What are the benefits of public debt? First thing which comes over here is the mobilizing resources of economic development. Public debt helps in mobilizing the resources for economic development. Means the government with the help of public debt or with the amount borrowed from the various sources, the government is in a position to utilize all the natural resources which are lying idle in the country especially in the direction for the development. It is in, with the help of the public debt, the government becomes strengthened enough or we can say that the government becomes sufficient enough to use the amount borrowed from the various sources to use for the better allocation of resources, for the proper distribution of the resources as well as for the proper you efficient use of the resources for the economic development as well as for the social development. Next, it is used for the infrastructural facility. The power amount borrowed by the government can also be used for the infrastructural facilities. Infrastructural facilities, it can be in the form of economic infrastructure or the economic overhead as well as the social infrastructure as well as the social overhead. In this, the borrowed amount of money can be utilized for the construction of roads. It can be utilized for the construction of power projects. It can also be utilized for the construction of schools, even for the health centers, or you can say the various marketing areas for the agriculture as well as for the industry. Next thing which comes over here, the public debt can also be utilized by the government for the developmental expenditure. Developmental expenditure means the government can utilize the borrowed amount of money for the areas or for the spheres which can help in increasing the productive capacity of the country. Productive capacity of the country can only be increased by increasing the number of industries, by increasing the agricultural sector and by making some new changes which can be beneficial for increasing the production in both the sectors. It can also be used in the construction of your railway tracks. It can also be used for the construction of bridges. Next thing which comes over here to acquire foreign exchange. Last but not the least, the government can also use the public debt to acquire foreign exchange. Foreign exchange means if the, suppose if the government is in need of the foreign currency, then what the government can do? The government can borrow from within the country and with the amount borrowed from within the country, then government can switch over to uh, borrow from other countries in the form of loans. Next thing which comes over here is the negative effects of the public debt. There are the negative effects of the public debt also. First is the additional tax burden. Additional tax burden, whenever the government borrows money from the public, it is the 
moral as well as moral responsibility of the government to return the loan and uh, this loan can only be returned by the government and the government alone is not going to pay off the loans but it is going to collect the amount only from the people only from the people means the amount the amount for the repaying uh, for repaying the public debt can be collected by the government only by imposing taxes and imposing taxes are always responsible for increasing the tax burden on the people tax burden of the people can be on on both the classes of the society whether the rich class or the poor class next is the effects on distribution the public debt is responsible for disturbing the distribution of income in the economy because in this case to repay the public debt the government always imposes the taxes and the taxes can be imposed by the government either in the form of direct taxes or indirect taxes direct taxes are imposed only on the high class of the society it covers the less number of people but if the government adopts the indirect taxes then indirect taxes it means it is paid by all the people of the society whether the person is rich or poor as a result the distribution of income gets disturbed in the economy next is the burden of external debt in the case of the public debt of the government can be internal or the external internal debt it can be voluntarily as well as compulsorily whereas in the case of external it is only a voluntarily but one thing over here in the case of internal the government may refuse to repay the debt but in the case of external the government cannot afford to do that because in any case the government has to repay the external debt and the external debt it keeps on increasing with the passage of time and moreover in some of the cases the burden of external debt is such that the government has to borrow more money money from the various sources or from the other countries of the world which again increases the burden on the people as well as the government of the country next thing is the unproductive debt once the government becomes habitual of borrowing from the public it is the easiest way to generate money or to produce money in the economy as a result the government sometimes may utilize public debt which is we in other words we can say that which is the hard earned money of the people for utilizing it for some unproductive purposes unproductive purposes like sometimes the government may use the public debt for the manufacturing of uh, defense equipments it may be utilized for only for the administration of the government machinery which is completely unproductive so the government must borrow from the public as the last resource and whatever the amount is borrowed by the government should be utilized or must be utilized only for the productive purposes because whenever the government borrows it is a liability because the government has to return the money to the public in any case as well as to the external governments or the external countries so government has needs to be very careful while spending the amount of the public debt on any of the project now let's recapitulate whatever the things we have learned we have learned in this chapter the meaning of public debt what is the public debt basically we have done public debt it is related to the loans raised by the government from within the country and from the outside we have learned the different types of public debt we have learned that what are the reasons what are the methods for public debt what are the reasons for the borrowing of public debt why the government needs to borrow the public debt now and in the end we have done that what are the positive and the negative effects of the public debt